I'm stuck out here for 24 hours with no service. Crazy. That's why you're telling me. I'm like, well, this is a good experience right here. There was no, there was no truck. Hours. There was no no truck signs. No, none. I ripped off one of my air tanks. How the hell did you do that? The GPS was rerouting me and having me turn around or whatever. And the road is having to turn on. There was like no sign for it or anything and it starts out paved, right? It was a camping access road. Yeah, there was no sign that said no trucks? No. Okay. Turn on the road, and like I said, the road starts out paved, so there's no way for me to tell right off the bat before I do the turn that it's a camping access road. Um, I am going down this. There's a couple bends, and I realize I'm like, this is a camping road. There's no, I barely, it, it basically turns into me barely sitting through there. There's absolutely. Yeah, but once you start noticing the problem, why would you keep going straight? Because I couldn't go in reverse anymore. Why not? Is there people behind you? Uh, no, because there's a bunch of beds. I can't... Going in reverse, I can't go in reverse. I'm not good enough to no, I hear do you. that. That's fine. Yeah. Please. So the only thing that I can think of is, well, I'm like, well, it says that there's a possible turn, like turnaround, up here. And so I got to this spot, there's no freaking turn around. Where are you? Where was this? Where would this happen? Uh, this happened like two what, weeks ago. What state though? Where? Nevada. And there's no dirt road you could, like, or dirt, hard compressed dirt area where you could just run around off the road? Nope. Uh, no. But, okay, that's, that's what I'm going to tell you. Okay, so I got to the spot where it's really easy I can turn around. And there's this hill that is bigger rock and everything. And then directly across from that is uh, a flat area that also has like a narrow opening. The only thing that I could think of is how uh, I can pull up the hill and then back into that dirt flat area and then get turned around, right? Yeah. So, I mean, that's my only option. There's, there's nothing. It's the only option that you know of. Yeah. yeah. Well, there's no there's no way for a record to get in there. Was there any way you uh, could actually did a legit U-turn, just straight up U-turn it? Nope. No, I, I could, I've got pictures of it. No, uh, yeah, send me some pictures. Uh, no, I'm yeah, saying, there's nowhere in that road that you could have did a U-turn. No. From no. beginning to end, there's no spot. No. All right. The one that it turned, the one that it put me on. So finish this story. We'll have the air tanks get ripped yeah. off the fucking okay. truck. Okay. So I'm climbing up the hill, and uh, keep in mind these are all super narrow. I knew that my trailer was going to go partially over into the spot that's not road, but when I checked it, there was no problem, and there wasn't. I made it through that spot, no problem. However, my truck was climbing the hill. So, if they, if they climb the hill a little bit more... You know why? Huh? Why did it quit climbing the hill? It just stopped? No. It should be with this deeper hill and their big rock. This is a legit camping access road. I don't... Anyways... Yeah, but if you baby the gas, it freezes up on you because the air pressure gets fucked up inside the transmission. Yeah. Yeah. Oh no, I had the air pressure and everything. So you didn't see clutch? Like, there's no clutch warning or nothing like that? No, you said it just stopped driving. I don't understand how the truck just stopped. Okay. What about, what about the differential lock? Do you use that? Okay, so that. I didn't think about, right? That, that, that's, that's one thing that I probably could have done. I, like, I, I spent 24 hours out there, stuck out there. So I had plenty of time to think about what I could have done, what I could have done, what I could have done. Yeah. 
whatever. Uh, Why don't you call me when this is going down? You had no service? I had no service on there. Okay. I had to walk way away from the truck to even... What about but, uh, text? Anyway. Yeah, next time try to text um, me something. I right, gotta go. Yeah. Tell me the story. Huh? Tell me the rest of the story. Okay, yeah. Anyway, all right. So, basically, I was forced to try to start backing up earlier than I wanted to. My trailer wasn't over far enough into the road, like the other road, for me for it to actually line up. So it basically put the front end of my truck in, like, off the road a little bit. And I visually didn't see anything other than, like, sheet grass and some branches and stuff. The branches were dead, very, like, rotting wood. I, I can drive right over those. It's not going to do anything. It's not going to pop my tires. Not a problem. However, there was a stump. <laughs> I didn't see the stump. It was just high enough that it kicked my air tank off. My, and so my truck had four air tanks. One of the air tanks is uh, transmission. It's a dedicated air tank for the transmission. Without that one, basically... Truck's done. I know. I, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of screwed. Like, anyways... Where was yeah, the air so tank? Under, much, uh, under your cab uh, right there? The, the four that are under your... What do you, you have a Volvo? Did I get the Volvo? No. What do you got? Kenworth, I right? got the Kenworth. Okay. Yeah. I actually do... I do like the Kenworth. I will say that the thing I like about the Volvo is it's turn, turning much better. It does turn better. I know. And they were backing, backing up. And then... But there's other things, there's things with the Kenworth though that I like too. The fact that I can go 70 miles an hour, that's a plus. I can and do 68 also, in mine now. We gotta go. They ramped it up. You can do 68 now? Yeah, it goes faster. They just changed it. Nice! Um, but guys, well, right, so guys, tell me what happened. And then the braking, <laughs> the braking. Yeah, so basically, okay, so they're like, the, the wrecker guy gets there, he's like, he's like, how? make it down there. And I'm like, bro, you're asking me something. But I'm like, look, I was following the DPS. It put me too far in. I had no choice but to try to find a turnaround. There was no way I was backing up and there was no way for a record to get in there and pull me out. That guy couldn't tow me out. You know how we got out? I drove the truck out. So exactly how I was trying to back out, uh, he got me turned around, did some shit, and... Yeah, he probably put the differential drove, lock on for you. But he still uh, had, he had to connect the air tank for you, though, right? The air tank popped off? You have pictures so of that? He, yeah, so I got lucky. The, the record dude is, like, a diesel mechanic from the military. Like, that guy was smart as shit. And what he did was he turned one of my other air tanks into the dedicated air tank for the transmission. So instead of losing like 40 plus pounds of pressure every time I switch from drive to reverse or whatever, I actually only lost like 15, 20. Like normal, right? Um, and uh, yeah, I drove, I drove the truck out. Um, but uh, yeah, anyways, the reason why I'm telling you all this is because I'm like, the lesson I learned is, and for your student, if you cannot see the turnaround. If you can see that it is telling you to turn around and you cannot see exactly what or where it's trying to tell you to turn around, it's probably a good idea not to take that round. <laughs> uh, Literally, only do a turnaround if you can freaking see what's ahead of you and where you're going to be turning around. Otherwise, don't do it. Listen, we uh. I always use my cell phone as the back of the seat in front of me where I'm where I'm supposed to go, so I don't like drive somewhere stupid. Yeah. You might want to start doing that. I mean, I use my phone. My phone probably would have told me the same shit. Uh, my thing is, is that why the hell would the truck GPS route me on a camping access road? Because it does that. You gotta pay attention when you see the. It looks like a camping access or like a, a neighborhood. You don't want to follow GPS. No. That's the number one excuse that cops hate. And I was following wow. my GPS. So if your GPS took you off the cliff, you're going to fucking continue well, or you're going to stop before the cliff. cliff? Yeah. yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? Well, 
Well, normally when I am seeing camping access roads, I wouldn't expect them to be like paved in the beginning or something like that. Like, why does it go? You start the road all nice and shit, and then, then you turn it into some kind of dirt road. Yeah, and I hear you, bro. Yeah. I'll send you, I'll send it's you. It's a learning pictures, experience, but, but what happened? You get in trouble? Um, well, I mean, um, there's no damage to the truck besides like, the I got, I got like a, I got a slap on the hand, basically, because, uh, okay, well, this, this is the other thing. So, the, Ken, the, the Kenworth dealership that they took me to, those guys are fucking idiots. And I'm going to tell you why. I am not a service technician, but I am mechanically inclined. I grew up working on cars, okay? These douchebags, uh, several things. The record guy and I checked all my brake calibers, all of that. None of them were damaged. The only thing on one of them, it did rub the stump and it peeled off some of the paint. It was not cracked or anything like that. It just peeled some of the paint off. That brake caliber is totally fine. Nothing wrong with it. Okay? My drive shaft, the bracket for my drive shaft was a little bent. But my, there's no damage to my drive shaft. So my drive shaft... The bracket just needed to be replaced. That's it. Right? Those douchebags basically ordered a drive shaft. They ordered a brake out of like a, a, a brake can or canister, whatever the hell you call them. Uh, and the S cam. They're ordering a bunch of shit that didn't need to be fucking replaced. So I had to let my DM know. I'm like, uh, I'm going to tell you right now, none of those things did not need to be replaced. And I'm like, without the drive shaft, how the hell did I drive the truck out? Yeah, I guess. I mean, they're going to try to bang him out. It has nothing to do with you. They're going to try to get the money because they know that you they can't check. You know what I mean? Well, they're going to try to get the money because it's a trucking company. Of course, the trucking company can afford it, but it's still annoying. Fine, because then it, looks, then it looks bad on me, like I caused a lot more damage. The only thing I did was basically that air tank was gone. <laughs> like it just whoops, right off. I didn't I didn't rip any of the lines or anything like that. But yeah, I just thought you know what maybe maybe I will. Share. I didn't rip any maybe lines off. Share. Just the like air tank fucking flying off. <laughs> no no God no it barely <laughs> bumped it. Bro I barely and as soon as I bumped it I. Instantly, I lost air, and yeah, so, like, I stopped, of course, like, I'm not doing anything at that point, but I just thought, I'm like, you know what, I will share this experience, because I know he's got a student, and this is some good advice from somebody that just fucked up, uh, as a new, <laughs> as still a fairly new student, um, yeah, don't turn on a road if it's a turnaround, if you can't see where you need to be turning around, don't turn on the road. Not a good idea.